it's Lisa welcome back to my channel today I have something really fun um, it's actually my birthday today and uh, it's Tuesday and you're watching this probably on Saturday um, God willing right and I was getting ready to decide what I was gonna wear tonight because we're going out for dinner and watch some music and I bought a new shirt a new shirt um, this weekend when I was out to a different town teaching in Zambroda. It was called uh, Wild Ginger is the name of the store. It has all these really cool feathers on it. So when I grabbed this out today, I was like, oh my God, this is the inspiration I need just to make a video. So here we go. That's what happened. Um, I thought about uh, doing watercolor because that definitely is a um, watercolory to me. Let me maybe just put a sleeve here while we talk. It's got these great blues, reds, oranges, browns, tans. The shirt is actually a cream color. Don't know if the light is doing it justice. I hope it is. Um, so um, on my desk I have had this bunch of goodies. And these are liquid watercolor, and someone gave it, gave them to me a um, few weeks back. Who gave them to me? Um, Kelly Hutchinson. She owns Gracie's Hutch. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Kelly, for these. What we're going to do is we're going to swatch them, and I'm going to show you my process. And um, I see here that there are two of the yellow and two of the red. So um, I'm going to set those aside, and if you comment on this um, video, I will put your name in a drawing with all the people that commented, as long as I get, let's say, as long as I get um, 15 people to comment, okay? Because if it's only two, you know, what fun is that? I want 15 people to comment on this video and you can comment more than once how about that if you comment more than once your name will be put in many times okay and I'll send you out these two watercolors one red is cadmium red and this is um, called cadmio am amarillo amarillo okay so I'll send those out to you if you're the winner so we're gonna swatch these and how we're gonna do that set it aside is with a ceramic palette and I have swatch books here's what they look like I wrote 2024 on here because this one is when I started in 2023 let me get here and I differentiated it just by scribbling on there by 2023 and in this one it's mostly um, watercolor type mediums here's my um, fluid acrylic Here's my Tom, Gonze Tombi watercolors, another palette of watercolors, acrylic inks here. We've got water soluble crayons, my large watercolor palette, Neocolor 2 pastels, which are water soluble, and also continued. And then we've got Dina Wakely scribble sticks in here. So isn't that so much fun? Now on the back pages here, I swatched all my acrylic. And this is my purple page. So these are my colors of paint in acrylics, okay? And then back page here is my yellows, my greens, so on and so forth, okay? So I'm going to go in here, nail, find myself a page that I haven't used yet and it doesn't look like I have one so what's nice about these um, painters diary color diaries is that they're removable sheets and I'll link these below okay so what we're gonna do is take out a page here they just click out so super easy like that so that I can put them right back in there okay so set these aside, and I'll put this one in my watercolor book, right? Get rid of that. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to get rid of the book and everything. i got to grab a marker. I'll be right back. All 
I always think I have everything right, and I never do. Okay, so I'll do this really quick. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I will... Here's water. My brush. Rest. I'm using a... Intuition Quill by Artigra, number two. Nothing special. I like the brush. I'm going to write on here, what are these? These are B-R-E-A, Brie, Reese, Watercolor Ink. All right, and then I'll swatch them uh, the names of the colors underneath, obviously, so I can find which one is which. This is cadmium, cad, d, I can never spell this one, m, i, u, m, cadmium, red, okay, then the next one is pink. And so forth. So I'll turn on the music and I'm going to put this down a little bit closer so you can see and I'll swatch all these and then we'll go ahead and look at these beautiful colors. We will compare it to the colors of my shirt and then I will show you something that I found in an old journal that really, really got me excited. Okay, I hope the light's good there. I'll turn off my sound, put on some music, and speed this up for you. All right, see you in a bit, okay?
just noticed that I did that whole thing without any um, instruction. So let me do it now. I'll do another one over here. Sorry about that. Sometimes that happens. I'm just loosely going to draw another feather. I'm using this as my kind of guide. I'm going to have it go this way this time. Feathers are very, um, very different. So it, they are all different. We don't have to feel that we've got to get them perfect. All feathers are different, right? Put this. I'm trying to be real loose. This marker is running out. I'm just putting these lines in here. And as I said before, that you couldn't hear me, um, I'm just being real loose and trying to be kind of scribbly. And I feel that by using this pen that is almost dead, and I knew it was, that it gives me less anxiety because I feel like I'm putting less ink down. And we'll go back over this feather after we paint it and let it dry and do some more marks. And it looked to me like I had put marks in here in the wet paint. So we'll go ahead and get a sharp tool to do that also. Just trying to be loose. And get something on the page here. And then we'll get to that fun part. And make sure you have enough room so that you can move your piece of art around. You know, this is just an art journal. But what if you came across something that you really, really loved and you wanted to do it again? I think that would be great. And that's why, that's why I do my art journals. I do my art journals just for me. Do these videos for you. Get in some creative play. There's number two. Not bad. Maybe we should do one behind, huh? Woo! Kind of nervous about that. Let it go off the page. This is where we'll have a thing coming in like this. Another thing coming in like this. Go behind this one. Move this clip. And then have it come out here, maybe. And it's going to be a big, big fatty one. Trying to be loose. Go behind this one. And have it come off the page. What do you think about that? Put the middle shaft in. I think that's what it's called, the shaft of the feather, huh? Scribbling, scribbling, scribbling. That is my style. Scribbling. <laughs> And that's fun. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put these in. I'll speed this up and we will get our paints out. Okay, so here's how it's looking. All right, hopefully I got the volume on this time. All right, so 
<clears throat> I know I'm not working with watercolor paints here. These are fluid acrylics, but they have such great color combinations. I just wanted to try it once, and we'll try on this leaf or leaf feather right here. Now, um, when you're not very careful with your paints, this is the problem you're going to have. Um, I'm using paint gray, yellow oxide, and a quidacridone nickel azel gold. So let's see what happens. I put a little bit out on a palette here. I'm just using the ceramic palette. I got this from uh, 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 TJ Maxx. I always look in their cooking area, and it was $3.99, but real nice ceramic palette. I buy them whenever I can find them. I'm going to start with a medium brush. This one is a number six. And it's a little big, but what we're going to do is we're going to float water, clean water on this big um, feather. And like I said, I'm working in my watercolor journal that I made. And I am going to make a handmade journal here. Um, as a class and it's going to have all different kinds of paper in it. It's going to have watercolor canvas. Um, it's going to have burlap. It's going to be like the Dina Wakely um, journal that you can't any longer, no longer get. You can't get it anymore. So I'm going to make my own perhaps um, if it's fun to do, maybe I'll make it into an, a class. I need to get my proposals ready for Shake Rag Alley for next year, believe it or not. So I'm always thinking of things that I can do to provide content for down there because I really, really am excited about um, teaching there in July. And if you would like, I will send you the link. Just let me know. I will link it for you. Leave a comment below. You can see I'm trying to get you to comment below because then uh, YouTube knows that people are liking my content. And if you watch a lot, I'm trying to get to 4,000 hours of people watching so that... I can get monetized on the channel, on my channel. It just gives you a little bit of income. I'm sure it is not much. Okay, I'm going to use this paints gray, and I'm going to keep it to the outside. See how I did here? I did the darker on the outside, and I, and I really quite like that. So this is going to be super uh, pigmented. But, oh... Look at that go, huh? And I'm going to try to leave some space. Believe it or not. I'm going to go darker on the edges. Now if you ask me, that is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to... Believe it or not, <laughs> I'm going to let that dry just as it is because I love it. I love it right there. Leave it. If you love it, leave it. If you love it, leave it. Um, I'm going to... <laughs> yeah, I can't leave it. I guess I got to I gotta add some more just because that water is in there and... I want it to mix around. Ooh, isn't that beautiful? And as I suspected, <clears throat> the Nico Azo Gold with this Payne's Gray made the coolest greenish color over here to the side 
and I want to leave it be pretty organic. I've got way too much paint out here on my palette. So you know what that means. I'm going to be making some papers later today. And what I mean by making papers, I get out old book pages and I use this paint on those pages so that I don't waste the paint and then I have something for a starting off point for other projects. My paint, my water is drying quite quickly. And boy, do I love that. I'm going to add some more clean water here without trying to manipulate it too much. I want it to be very organic in what the paint is doing. And as it's drying, I'm just going to tiny touch that blue again. I want to keep it dark. If possible, without wrecking anything, you know. Um, it's a fine line. Before you push it too far, and then people will say, well, how do you know you pushed it too far? Well, you know. You know when you know. And uh, I love it right now. I really love this nickel azo gold. Okay, so I need to stop. I need to stop before it gets to that point. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to give it just a little bit of a dry. I'm going to do it with you here to show how little bit of a dry I want to get it. Just like that. It's got a little shine to it yet, as you can see. Let's see if I can tilt it for you. See, it's got a little shine. Now I brought a hard tool. I thought I did. I'm going to use this. And I'm going to scrape in. And look at I just smudged all of that with my finger there. Let's see if I can fix it quick. I'm working on watercolor pa paper. And I don't think it's going to let me. But we will just continue on. I don't want to fret. I don't want to do it again, though. I like it. I really like it. Now I saw on this one, I did splatters of the same color. 
Do I dare do it now? I think maybe because of the type of paint I'm using, I better. And I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to cover this up. And I see I've made a few errors here, but... We'll see what we can do. And I feel like I did not splatter over the feather. See? Looks like I put something down to protect the feather and did the background. So let's try and do all that. I've got a paper towel here. Try that. Get a little nickel azo gold, this beautiful color. Got a little dot on that one, but saved it. Do a little bit of this blue. I'm sorry, not blue, paint's gray, but always. lens blue to me. You see I got a big spot here. Don't love that. But I'm gonna let it be. And I'm gonna do this yellow. Yummy. 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 I've got to let this dry. Okay. I'm going to let it dry. And I'm going to get excited about this. I'll be back. Okay, I dried this mostly with my heat tool, but I am going to put this piece of um, deli paper over the top just so I don't get my hand in it when I'm working on this side. I'm going to go to my next colors that I picked out using my watercolor diary. And these are Gonzai Tambi, Gonzai Tambi, so hard for me to say, um, by Kiritaki. And I'm just going to give them a little bit of water there. And I'm going to test them on this piece of watercolor paper because five colors seems like a lot. Three worked out real well on the other one. So I'm just going to test out what I pulled. I know this is a green gold. And I think that will be... Oh, look at that color. Oh my gosh. That will be really nice. But I don't want to have too many. You know what I mean? you, you got to kind of limit somehow. It's brown, and that brown was really in that shirt that I used for my inspiration. And I know this is going to be an awesome color. That is one of my favorites. That is vermilion. I am 100% sure on that. I'm not sure what this one was. Oh, boy. A beautiful, beautiful blue. Probably an indigo or something. And this last one here looks like a real neat grayish blue yep it is and so I know that that grayish blue was definitely in that shirt so I'm gonna um, take away this indigo one and I'm gonna keep the gray gold the brown just because and I'm gonna need a lighter and uh, we'll try we'll try this I'm going to give them a little bit more water. I'm just going to use them right out of these pans. I absolutely love these paints. Um, and hopefully, um, yeah, if you want to, if you want the link for those, they are amazing. So, well, I think maybe I can even go up here. I feel like I'm flirting with disaster there, but we're going to do it the same way. We're going to do the top one here, and I've got pretty clean water. I'm going to put down quite a bit of water in our feather. I 
And again, this is watercolor paper I'm using, and I didn't gesso it or anything. So the water is soaking in quite a bit. you got to give it a little bit of time to soak in and tell you what it's going to do, right? Really, the paper and the paint and the water are who's in charge here. You're just, you're just the tool. You're just the helper. They're going to do what they want to do. Kind of just bend this a little bit. So I don't have any running off my paper. Okay, now for the fun part. I'm going to start with the green gold. Sometimes I have a hard time talking when I do this because I'm just like, ooh, just watching it do its magic. My stomach's growling too. It's time for lunch. But I thought I would get this paint down so that I could give it some time to dry, right? And these probably are not colors that you're going to see in nature of the feather. But why does it have to be, right? I... I think um, feathers can be any color. Look how it's swirling here. I'm really not going to try and overwork this. I really love it already. Um, just get a tiny, tiny bit of this vermilion because, because I love it. And I just dipped into the brown, so I guess we're going to do a little brown. I apologize, my stomach is really growling. Okay. I'm kind of bending the paper back on itself. I've got a lot of pooling going on down here. And then I'm just going to pick a little bit of it up with the edge of my paper towel. Right? Whatever works. Look at this line going here. Now I feel like I want to move my whole book to pull that down. I'm going to dab up this edge. I'm going to give it one more dot down here of the orange. Or several more dots, I guess. And I'm going to leave it. <clears throat> For one thing, I'm hungry. My stomach's growling. I apologize. And for another, I don't want to overwork it. Ugh. It's just calling for a little more of that green gold. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to leave it now. <laughs> That's the hardest part, is knowing when to quit. We've got paint splash, splashing all over here. And I'm actually going to put a little something under this side. I don't know what I've got. Because I kind of want it to go down the shaft there. Let's put this palette under here. Ooh, baby. Love it. Love it. Just a little tiny. Okay, now here's where I'm going to give it just a little bit of a dry. <coughs> Got something weird going on here. So that we can put those 
lines in it like we did on the other one. It's just got to be a little bit... I got it a little too dry. Now, I don't want to wreck my pens, so I need to let this dry completely. Here's our inspiration piece that we did earlier. We have one more feather to do, so go have some lunch, come back, we'll do that, okay? Everything is dry. I love the colors. Let's do this last one. I apologize for my wiggly desk here. Um, it's a new setup and I am trying to get a new desk for here. So it'll, it'll all work out. <clears throat> okay, so here is the printed off version of my shirt. That was the inspiration for these feathers. I liked that shirt that I wore last night. It was very fun. Okay, so we're done with these. Turned out neat. Let's go to the next palette that I pulled out. And I pulled out some gouache. And the colors that I pulled out are here. We will, again, just do a little bit of sampling if I can get them open. Sometimes they're so hard to open. Okay, here we go. This one is... Um, I'm sure an ochre, yellow ochre, one of my favorites. This one is a deep green. Trying not to put out too much paint again because as you can see, you sure don't need a lot. This one is vermilion. Another favorite. And then I chose a sky blue. And I am so hoping that this one won't wreck the one in front of it. What can you do? You know, you just try. We'll put this yellow down here at the bottom. It's kind of bright. It's called a mid-yellow. Okay, so got my paint, my brush right in the paint right away. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this end up upside down so I can get to it on um, this way. All right. Okay, same as before. I'm actually gonna get some cleaner water here. 
Gives me spray bottle water. And I'll give these paints a little spray here. Okay, same as before. We're going to take a lot of water. And I hope this doesn't wreck my other thing. Letting the water soak in. To the page. Let's be brave. Sometimes that's hard to do, isn't it? Oh, I hope that doesn't run there. Let's do do a little right away. Get some color in. I think we need more water to make that go. And I've got a paper towel. Let's do some of that green. It looks really dark. Let's be brave. Just put it in. These aren't um, flowing as well as the others did. Maybe not enough water. I'm just going to gently go in here. And then get away from it because <laughs> I don't want to I don't want those to bleed in together too much and I'll do some pen work on here and, and I'm really looking forward to that I really like to do pen work um, on watercolor Go for it. And then in between here, we'll make that pen work really be, let's put my water over here so I don't keep crossing. We'll put that so it's really bold there, huh? And we're going to go off the paper here. Put some of that green down. Yeah, the colors aren't moving as much as the others did. Let's put some of that blue in there. It's almost like a periwinkle, oh, which would be one of my very most favorites. And I'm using a lot of water here to try and make these paints move. And like I said, these are gouache, so they're moving differently. I'm going to put a little green in here. Just to carry that green from this side to this side is what I was thinking. I've got to get a little dot or two of this. Beautiful orange. And that orange is really moving. And just a tip there. Okay, I'm going to leave it because I don't want to wreck it. I'm going to dry it. I'm going to dry it really good. I'm going to put down a few splatters in the background by covering it up like we did before because this is looking a little too um, white for me. I'm going to do all that off camera, and I'm going to come back when it's dry so we can do some pen work. Okay? All right, stay tuned. All right, let's finish this up. So here's our inspiration. This was a picture of the shirt that I was going to wear last night.
uh, for my birthday. I don't know which way it went. doesn't matter. Um, loved all the colors. Loved the feathers. So, to recap, I found this in one of my old pra practice journals. And it gave me the inspiration to do this. So I used some fluid acrylic and some watercolors that I had picked out. I love how it's looking. Now we're going to do some <clears throat> line work. I'm going to focus. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been talking so much lately. I'm going to focus in here on this one. That's um, the one we started with first um, because I know it is more dry than the other two. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I probably will work on it off camera. Camera, excuse me. I apologize for the train. There's nothing I can do about the trains. They go by every day. So let's go like this, maybe. And we'll work on this. Like I said, this um, micron pen was a little um, dried out. So I'm going to go to this one that is uh, more my favorite. And it is a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in a point, a 0 0.5. Okay, I'm going to keep this over here for my inspiration. Oops, I don't want to move everything too much on my wobbly desk here. I apologize. It'll work out. Okay, so now I'm going to <clears throat> work on these scribbly fine lines here that I'm going to put in. And I'm going to go around and I'm going to make it real scribbly. Because I think that's what really makes it fun and interesting. And already it looks really nice. So I'm trying to show you here what I did on this one. So I'm going to go all around. I'm going to try not to overdo. I'm going to put in that shaft. I'm going to work on this off camera. And we'll come back and we'll see what I got. Okay? All right. It may take me a bit. Okay, here's how it's looking. As you can see... I continued with the black on the edges with my permanent marker, put in the marks that I could, kind of exaggerated the feathers. I so love it. I'm really loving it. A lot more work to do, which is fine. I'm looking forward to working on this for the rest of the day. But you see how I did here? Um, kind of that smokiness on the edge. I want to show you how to do that. And then I'm going to leave you here. And I'll um, finish this video. And we will, I, I will um, post the finished pictures um, at the end of the video, video. So watch to the end if you can. I know sometimes they get long. But I just want to show you how I did this kind of smoky area on the edge which is a really great technique and I love to do it. I'm just going to turn this book upside down here and I'll work on this edge okay of this um, feather. Now I'm using a marker that is water soluble. Before important to know we were using a, um, a permanent marker, a micron a micron pen, a Faber-Castell um, pit artist pen is permanent. Now this one here I had in my stash. It's called the Finito by Pentel. Um, it's black and it is um, water soluble. And how I knew that is because I just took a little piece of paper. If I can find it. Yeah. Here it is. I just took a little piece of paper here, scribbled some down, and I dried it with my heat gun, and then I added water to it, and it moved. 
so then I knew it was water soluble. Okay, little tip, little tip to help you out. Okay, I'm going to um, do this edge here, and I'm using this water soluble marker. I'm just kind of scribbling in this area. And I do a little bit at a time. So I'm going to do this area here. Taking <coughs> some semi-clean water. And I'm just going to lay my brush in here. And the water wicks out away from the piece. Can you see how cool that is? And this may not be for you. That's fine. That's fine. Do what you like, right? I, on the other hand, love. Love it. And I'll do a little bit more over here. Just going around. The more you put down, of course, probably the more ink will move, right? And you, you need to still be um, careful with your pens so that you don't go over the water with your pen so much that it wrecks the tips. But I really like the look of this, how it wicks out like that. Yes, hold it up a little bit so you can see it closer. I like that effect. Okay, so now you go ahead and do yours if you're creating with me. I am going to leave this be. I am going to go for my walk. And I'll come back and work on it. I hope you enjoyed this um, video of making these really fun feathers. Oh, I love it. Hope you liked it. Um, leave me some love, some comments, some thumbs up. Watch a bunch of videos. Get that time in for me. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. We'll see you um, hopefully next Saturday. Um, no promises. I will do what I can. And that's all I can promise. I'll do what I can. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye.